great game. First half, everything going right for Louisville. Nate Johnson steals the ball from Saul Smith, but Smith, Noonan. However, Louisville recovers the ball. Marcus Mabin winds up with it in the corner. Passes eventually to Johnson, who just don't dunk it, just lay it in. Louisville up one, Tubby Smith gesticulating. More Louisville, good fortune. Cameron Murray, alley -oop pass to Johnson. Deflected right to Tony Williams. Denny Crum's team up seven at the half. Would have been up more if he got more points for the jacket. Second half, the things get rough. Jamal McGlure, Nate Johnson going at it, pushing, shoving. Almost some feud playing. McGlure and Johnson both hit with technicals. We're not done with those two either. Under 10 minutes left in regulation. Louisville up six. Tobias Hopper gets the lay-in. Then, great defense on the inbounds pass. Scott Padgett, one of 18 Kentucky turnovers. The Wildcats also shot two of 15 from three-point range. Tubby Smith's team down 10 just like that. Later in the second half, still a 10-point game. Maven takes the pass from Murray, and he hits the three. And the foul. Maven with 19 points. Louisville up 13, closing seconds of the game. Johnson and McGlure with a little tete-a-tete -tete once again. And now there's going to be some more than just words. Pushing, shoving. Look at everybody coming on the floor. It's like a Stanford Cal game there. The cheerleaders don't want to get mixed up in that. McGlure and the Wildcats lose the game and they're cool. 83-74 is the final. I guess Padgett will have to hear it for another year. Talking about, that's right, there's Jay Wright. Does more than just draw up plays when you're the coach of Hofstra. Tough Hofstra D early. Here's an example. Off the steal, Mike Renfro pushing it, pushing it. Get it up to the guy who knows where the bucket is, Norman Richardson. Hofstra led 29-17 in the break. Tech, ball handling, not good. Freshman point guard Tony Akins, a nightmare. Ten turnovers for him. More Georgia Tech troubles. Akins throwing it away again. Coach Kremen's Yellow Jackets finished with 25 giveaways. Hofstra was up 41-33. Then Richardson provided the knockout. The 6'5 sophomore swing man was four of six from three-point range. 9 of 14 from the field. Again, Richardson, Richardson remarkable. So is the entire Hofstra team as they pulled off the 61 to 42 upset in the opening round of the ECAC event in New York. When One of them held a 43-25 rebounding edge and shot 57% from the floor and lost the game. Other stats, including the final score, must have had some kind of impact. Pictures available now. Purdue trying for nine straight wins. Jamel Thomas, the leaner's good. Then Cameron Stevens shares it. Corey Wright gets the easy one. Providence up six. Gene Ke Katie having kittens. Thomas then knocks the ball away from Tony Mayfield. Thomas, he's tall. Purdue 27 turnovers in this one. Jerron Cornell, fancy shot. It's good. Boilermakers are down four. 13 seconds left. Friars up 85 82. Cornell, a chance to tie, but it's short. Then they launch it out for Aaron Maxey. He's open to dunk at home. And Maxey and his teammates meet their classmates. Providence forced 27 turnovers in this one, ended its two game losing streak. Friars hadn't played in more than two weeks. They're now seven and four after this upset. Kendrick Moore, he was back for Providence after missing seven games with a stress fracture. He scored 14 points. I was just counting them up right then. Drake in Indiana in the Hoosier Classic. 15. Melvin Levitt did hop over a golf cart during the Bearcats' midnight madness. On Sunday, the senior guard looked to take his game to new heights when he returned to his hometown. Levitt and the Bearcats were in Cleveland to play the Dayton Flyers in the rock and roll shootout. To the Gund Arena. Levitt, if he has a problem, he may be too talented. He thinks he can do too much. David Morris takes it the other way, looking for Kobe Turner. Turner's going to spot Tony Stanley. Stanley's got to be pumped up. Flyers take an early lead. But Levitt did give Cleveland something to cheer about. Kenyon Martin, no. Levitt, Levitt, Tate. Only field goal of the day. Cincinnati trail by four at halftime. 20 seconds to play. Dayton down one. Tony Stanley, no. Stanley. And a foul. Commits the foul to stop the clock. Dayton gets one more chance, down two, and they go in. You don't go in against Kenyon Martin and live to tell about it. Kenyon Martin, who may be the best defensive player in the country, certainly looked like that on Sunday as he blocked a couple of shots in the final couple of seconds there. Ends with 18 points, 13 rebounds, and three blocked shots. Bearcats have now defeated Dayton nine straight times this stretch, dating back to 1989.
Dayton has dropped back-to-back -back games to Cincinnati and Louisville by a combined five points. Fifth-ranked Terrapins hosting South Carolina State. Penn Quakers hosted Hofstra. Quakers 2-0, and Michael Jordan is their leading scorer, 1-3 when he's not. Fair ball. Jordan 0 for 7 from the floor in the first half. Second half, Penn down 5. Jordan. Brown. Jordan. Backside. Got it to go. Penn within three, same score under 10 seconds to go. Jordan a chance for the tie, the three. Didn't get the three, didn't get the tie. Hofstra would hit two free throws to seal it. Jordan finishes with well, only seven points. And his Hoosiers rip off two straight 100-point games, including a 102-46 thumping of Drake, the 56-point win, the fattest for IU since 1971. He almost wondered if it was really night when he said, we couldn't play any better than we played, until he added, for most of the game. Here we go. Indiana. Indiana needs to put a little bit of pressure on right here. Coming up against Ball State. And check this out. Oh, Poppy, I did not know you could do it like that. Dwayne Clemens, who had 16 points, puts Ball State up by four at the break. But second half, IU football quarterback Antoine Randall L. He threw 11 picks this year. He got one back. Then he left it for A.J. Guyton. Guyton, 12 points and 4-12 shooting. IU up later in the half. William Gladys finds Luke Recker. Recker, wrecking Ball State. He had 17 points. And then Ball State trying to play a hate Randall L. Don't hate the player, hate the game. To Guyton, to Wrecker. IU on a 19 to 5 second half run. They beat Ball State 72 to 62. Indiana Wildcats, one of only four unbeaten teams. First half, Pac-10 leading scorer Jason Terry's got crazy game. He had 13 points, five steals, four assists, including that nice oop to Richard Jefferson. Wildcats on a 19 nothing run. Then Ruben Douglas, Davis to Travis Wilson. Rock the fat dunk right in Chris Spittler's mug. 11 different Wildcats scored. Spittler would be okay physically. His psyche, we don't know about. And then T. Wilson. T. Wilson, don't hurt him, kid. Don't break out of Jordan on him. He broke it out. Said Lute Olsen, matter of fact, obviously we had too many athletes on our side and too much quickness. Arizona rolls. This is first round action in the first half. Robert O'Kelly, strong drive for two. Wake Forest was down nine. Three minutes later, Adam shot the steal. Andre Miller finishing the nice play in transition. Utah up 15. They would leave by 12 at the break. Then early in the second half. More of your transition game. Miller. Comes up with a steal right there. Picks it clean. Then the nice pass would lead to the Tony Harvey slam. Utes up 19 and pulling away. Under five to play in the game. Miller, the dish to Nate Altoff for the dunk. Utah 18. They go on to win 63-45. You know, Utah fell out of the top 25 for the first time since 1994 after losing at Texas on December 12th. But since then, the Utes have won five of their last six and all of their five home games this season by an average of nearly 22 points. Overall, their 26th straight win at home, fifth longest in the nation. 17th ranked New Mexico taking on New Hampshire. Another first round game of the Lobo Classic. Kevin Henry for the three pointer. New Mexico was up early. Then they go inside. Greg Davis to Kenny Thomas. They spin on the baseline. Back to the perimeter. And the ball movement again to Henry for another three. This one from the corner. New Mexico up 52-26 at the half. Henry had 16 in the first half. Second half, they're running it up. Lamont Long, the pick. The curls to the hoop. Nice shot there. And the roll. The Lobos win it 93-67. to Kenny Princeton is seen here on ESPN. First half time winding down. Brian Earl from way out. He had 13. Princeton up 34-23 at the break. Late second half. Princeton by one. Mason Rocca misses the three, hustles for the loose ball underneath, and lays it in. Princeton up three. FSU, one last chance. Terrell Baker from three. Can't hit. Princeton gets the board, and they escape with a 50 to 46 win. That after blowing a 14 point lead. So Princeton wins. 1,657 on hand in the new arena in Oakland, and they watched John Chaney coach his 800th career game. Cold shooting early for Stanford. Chris Weems. Peter Sauer. Air ball. Wow. Cardinal, three for 13 from behind the arc. Trail 22-21 at the half. Second half, different half. Different story. Sauer for three. David Mosley for three. Arthur Lee for three in that run. Stanford up 
Then Stanford goes inside, actually. Lee alley -oop to Mark Manson. You know what? That was Stanford's only two-point bucket of the second half. Back to the arc for the knockout punch. Lee, six of seven from the field, four of four from the land of Trey. 16 points. The rest of the Stanford team combined to just shoot 28% from the field. Stanford goes on to win 57-50. Stanford wins despite sinking only nine shots from the field in the second half. It helped that eight of them were threes. As you can tell, Temple's matchup zone did its job inside. It held Tim Young scoreless for the first time in his college career. John Chaney's record dropped, if that's the right word, to 587 and 213. In the opener, number nine, North Carolina against Ben Bronze, eight and one Cal Bears. First half, Cal trying to keep it close. Gino Carlisle puts it in reverse. Second half, Cal battling the heels. Chris Lang blocks Carlisle, but Sean Lampley, two of his 14. UNC, however, still in control early in the second half. Ed Coda to Chris Lang. Coda had seven assists, but also had five turnovers, which was the heels bugaboo. Heels up 10, not anymore. It's now a three-point game. Francisco Elson with the follow. Cal within one. The Bears on a 22-7 run. Gino Carlisle on the wing. Gets the nice, friendly home roll. Or bounce. 71-66 Cal. Carlisle with 29. The icing on the cake. The dagger in the heart, if you will, Thomas Kilgore. Three of his 21. Cal up 74-66. Cal pulls the upset final. 78-71. Second straight loss for Carolina, which in Coach Bill Guthridge's words, couldn't stop Carlisle. The Heels also couldn't hold on to the ball. 24 turnovers. A season high 29 for Carlisle is possession of the game. The robber Baron Davis picks it off. It's showtime. He had 13 points in the game. Second half. UCLA up 17. This time, Baron Davis with the passing. No look. That's fancy. Jerome Moisu, the freshman, had 21. Moisu. Final seconds of the game. Did I say showtime? No, actually, now it's Baron Davis showtime. Oh, that's a facial. With authority, if you will. UCLA wins 92 to 67 is the final. UCLA won its sixth straight overall and did so by 25. On the alley oop for two of his 12. Jamal McGlure with the rebound and the offensive put back. He had 15. Scott Padgett for three, finished with seven. Saul Smith coaches son for three of his eight. Kentucky was up by 21 at the half. Second half, Ryan Hogan into the mix. Hogan hits the three, he finished with 12. Ishimu Evans lays it in, he had eight. Jules Kamara also had eight, two here as we continue to go down the roster. Tayshawn Prince had seven. Desmond Allison had nine. Steve Masello had three. Freshman J period, P period Blevins had two. The only Wildcat not to score, Todd Tackett. He didn't play. Everybody else that played scored. 97-47 for Kentucky. The Wildcats snapped their two-game losing streak. Their first such skid since 93-94. McGlure led the way. 15 points, 8 rebounds. Notre Dame and Syracuse. Second half, Syracuse up by one. Notre Dame's Phil Hickey rejected. Alan Griffin takes the ball the other way. He finished with a career-high 17. Two there. Syracuse up 48-45 at this point. Second half now. Damone Brown, the nice steal. Damone Brown coming right at you. Syracuse up 56-49. More Syracuse in the second half. Jason Hart, quick between the legs dribble. He had 15 points. Syracuse ends up winning 75-63 as the Orange are able to shut down Notre Dame's Troy Murphy. That was the Gophers leads the Big Ten, averaging 22.4 points a game. He scored 22 in this one. We got the jumper right there. Minnesota wins at 98-57. Minnesota now 9-1. Sac State in a sad state. They dropped to 0-10. Illinois over Clemson by the final score of 67-50. Arius Davis had scored just 16 points all season, but he scored 20 in this one. His previous career high was 14 points against St. John's in 1997. Clemson loses for just a second time all season. Rhode Island against Pepperdine. Jelani Gardner running the fast break. The bounce pass here to Mark McDowell. And Pepperdine led 37-23 at the half. Second half, Lamar Odom for URI. Spin move. He had 19 points and 8 rebounds. Five minutes left in the second. Preston Murphy to big Ed Brown. Big Ed Brown had 10 points. That brought the Rams to within 8. 3.30 left in the second. Kelvin Gibbs to McDowell, who had 13, and Jim Herrick's homecoming, not pleasant, as Pepperdine goes on to win 61-57.
Herrick coached at Pepperdine before he went to UCLA and not. With their SEC schedule beginning Saturday against Tennessee, the Tigers hosted another improved team, 3-6 and six, Bethune Cookman. Improved because Bethune Cookman went 1-26 last season. And look who's on hand, Chuck and Wesley Person, former Auburn alums. Why are they there? Because they're locked out. <laughs> Silly. No, they're there to watch their nephew, Auburn junior Adrian Person, who scored seven. Later in the first half, scrambling for the ball. Auburn's Bryant Smith saves it to Scott Coleman. Auburn up 22 at the half. And then a moment of trepidation for Doc Robinson. Is there a doctor in the house? Thankfully, he did not need one after he was upended over Freddie Cole. Everyone's okay, especially Auburn, who wins 99-46 on this night. With the 53-point victory, the Tigers jacked up their nation's best margin of victory average to 29.3. Kenny Thomas and Lamont Long each scored 23 as New Mexico beat Houston and won its own Lobo Invitational. G. Gervin led all scores with 29. Well, I almost forgot to make the obligatory mention that G. Gervin is the son of George Gervin, Bill. Princeton and Texas, how about being fundamentally sound in a half-court offense? Gabe Luellis, back door. He had a game-high 19, and Princeton from the Ivy League beats Texas. 56-46, to 46. Princeton now will take on UNC Charlotte Wednesday in the championship game.